It's the sound of serenity along a country road. Leonard Manley savors its comfort. Can you believe it's been a year? Yeah. No, I had a lot of sleepless nights. He's enduring the worst kind of pain a parent can experience. This is a new poster, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, they're about two or three weeks old. Manley has no answers about who shot and killed his daughter, Dana Roden, and seven other family members last April 22nd, or why they did it. The murders rocked rural Pike County to its core. It's like a nightmare. It's something out of a horror movie, it really is. The killers somehow entered trailer homes located on four properties on Union Hill Road near Manley's house in the middle of the night. Time feels frozen there now, back to a day last May when investigators towed the homes to a secure warehouse to preserve evidence. The unsolved case haunts Sheriff Charles Reeder. You came in like thieves in the night and took eight lives, some being children. in the most horrific way I've ever seen in my 20 plus years. Whoever did it spared a four day old baby girl, a six month old boy and his three year old brother. The babies were found covered in blood laying next to their parents in bed. The children are doing very well. They're in foster care. Manley tells me a court gag order limits what he can say about his great grandchildren. I can tell you they've grown like a weed and we get us in. And that's all I can take. Detectives remain tight-lipped about the investigation, even though they admit a year later they've hit some roadblocks. We are getting closer. We will find you. From day one, the sheriff and Attorney General Mike DeWine haven't shared much with the public or the victims' families about the case. We have a murder or murderers uh, who have done this. Clues about a motive remain as elusive as they were in the first hours of the investigation. We have a specific family that has been targeted. A grieving father shared vivid details of the brutality after his son's funeral. My nephew was laying one way and Gary was laying over his legs. Shot three times in the head. Dana Roden's sister discovered one of the gruesome scenes and called 911. There's blood all over the house. Okay. My brother walked in the bedroom and looked like a I beat the hell out of them. First time in there looks like the dead. Community members immediately offered surviving family members and each other support and prayers. We try to stay, you know, close knit as a family, and when something like this happens, it it affects all of us. One victim's daughter bravely shared her pain with the world. They were the best people to know. They were all kind and full of love. Within days, Reader and DeWine said investigators found indoor commercial pot grows on two properties and that some of the victims sold it. They also found evidence of cockfighting. Chopper 9 reporter Dan Carroll was first to see the crime scenes from above. There's one shot I'll never forget in particular, and I think it was the second time we went out there, but there were uh, guys with the white hazmat suits on and they were looking around the area behind one of the one of the big barns. Speculation quickly grew that a Mexican drug cartel was responsible. Sheriff Reeder squashed that idea six months ago during an interview with the Nine on Your Side I team. You're saying that the suspects likely either live in Pike County or in the area somewhere nearby? Yes, that is my belief. 100% certainty. That's my belief. Manley also believes it. So does his pastor. With how this all happened and no evidence left, how they got in without being detected and how could it not have been. Pastor Phil Fulton tells me the family is now worried about one source of evidence. The biggest thing right now for the families is the autopsy reports. The Pike County coroner has hidden ballistics and drug and alcohol information on those reports, he says, to protect the investigation. Two newspapers have sued the coroner's office for the information because the newspapers believe the public has a right to know it. They want them to leave it alone. Let law enforcement take care of it. Meanwhile, investigators work against the clock. I like them catch them, but you know, that long way down the road, I'd say. A road that one year later includes 900 tips to investigators and hundreds of interviews, still no real leads and no closure for Dana Roden's family. It'll never be closed. Even if they arrest someone? No. It's a road where a sense of serenity now means everything. The sheriff also said last week he's confident detectives have been lied to throughout the course of the investigation, making an already complex case even more challenging to solve. 
They're still looking for tips and there's still a $10,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. Back to you.